Thank you very much. Thank you, RAI. And welcome to all the delegates here. Uh, this is a this is a new beginning in the Retecon uh, era. Uh, Retecon has been running these awards of startup awards for many years now, and this year RAI has decided to take these awards to the next level uh, with the help of uh, work platforms like Hundred Watts. The idea is that we just don't give just identify these startups and ventures of whatever work they're doing, but also to help them to go to the next level of growth with the help of mentoring and maybe help in investing. And that's the whole purpose of, of this session as well as this relationship, which has been formed between RAI and 100 Watts. 100 Watts is a platform driven by the industry community, largely it's the CIOs of the industry, who are now committed to develop and, and, and innovate uh, various technologies required for the business growth. And the idea here is that, that we identify ventures who are bringing exciting technology for the for the suitable for the industry at that point of time and which fits into the industry needs and requirements and also help those ventures from the product market fit point of view as well as bring them to a level where they become uh, viable for investors like current we sitting here so welcome once again uh, what we will do in today's session is the idea is here that one is that we identify uh, models like one is to establish that what is required from what is expected from B2B ventures like this uh, by the retail industry. And number two, uh, the objective will be to find out what kind of expectations these ventures have uh, from, the, from, the, from the retailers to accept them. And the third is what kind of uh, expectations ventures uh, capitalists have, VCs have, to, to see them investment ready and see them an exciting investment opportunity. So that's what we'll discuss. Let me invite uh, Karanbir to start with. Karanbir, uh, uh, just let me bring you in first. Uh, from the point of view of, you know, I, I understand the last decade of 2000 to 2010 was a B2C decade, what everybody says. Right. And now they say 2021 onwards uh, is a B2B uh, decade where a lot of B2B ventures will progress and will, will, will build value in the whole ecosystem. What is your view and what, on the other hand, what is your view about B2B ventures in retail tech? What is your uh, observation as, as an investor in this space as of now? What's your industry view? Perfect. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ajay, for having me here and making the kind introduction as well. And I think uh, very rightly pointed out, uh, right? It it is. I, I won't say it's it's an era only for B two B. B two C is going to continue to flourish. Uh, there's a large consumer market out there, so that's going to happen. But you know, one primary reason I see B two B going uh, really well over the next 10, 15, 20 years is that today we are at a point where you know businesses need to transform, they need to change, they need to evolve. And, and many of it may be, you know, just reactive um, reactions to market forces, uh, right? But the need is now there. To cater to this need, uh, businesses will have to either develop capabilities in-house or absorb solutions from outside, right? And hence, you, you are seeing, uh, and you know, we have seen some great startups coming from 100 watts, using so many of these startups trying to pitch in to contribute to the value chain, right? And if you look at the B2B, retail B2B space, uh, I, I look at it from, you know, two angles, uh, broad angles. One are startups that are catering to the internal operations of a retailer. And then there are the external operations right and when i say external i mean there are brands on one side the consumers on another there's a supply chain management uh, link and then you also have uh, a growing fintech uh, layer that is being built right so startups today uh, as a venture capitalist when we look at a startup um, catering to any of these domains for a retailer we really have to see first which one is it really then how much are retailers willing to spend over the next five years on that solution, right? If, if you talk about any business, there are two, two broad things, right? Either uh, a, a company, either your service provider will help you expand the top line or the bottom line, right? Or maybe both, but you know, primarily bottom line or the top line. So when we look at a startup, right? Um, very important to see 
what is the possible expansion in the top line possible right because this startup will only get to charge a piece of that top line you know that expansion right similarly when we talk about uh, solutions coming in to improve the bottom line it is becoming increasingly important and hence you see so much uh, pressure uh, to improve retention let's say customer uh, retention of customers right um, so there we look at how how much is that increase in the bottom line that's cost savings right and these startups will be getting a part of those savings so when we look at a startup today uh, in any of these internal or external operations this is how uh, we see this industry but what is happening across the industry is the market is growing people are now adapting and adopting tech uh, right tech solutions very actively so the b2b game is picking up it has picked up and it will continue to pick up and you will see more and more data driven models uh, coming in making the processes efficient there i hope i hope uh, that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah beautifully put uh, karan and i think let me bring in vikram here vikram you as an as a consumer or a, as a as a somebody who's consuming these technologies and you know the industry has gone through a lot of uh, lot of turbulence in the last one and a half year during the pandemic and i think uh, you know uh, current said that there are technologies required for helping the top line and the bottom line and you know various other touch points in the whole value chain uh, what has been your experience and observation in the role of these b2b ventures in in helping an enterprise like you uh, to to deal with these challenges whether it is a top line bottom line or or generally the disruptions during to due to pandemic you know yeah so i think uh, taking forward what uh, karan said okay uh, i think organizations like ours and uh, i won't only speak for us but i speak for a lot of uh, even smaller organizations okay smaller retail uh, uh, companies i think they need to transform fast okay with the high speed of uh, change in the retail market and the scale that's happening Uh, and the uh, you know variety of products that are uh, being offered and how they are being offered to customers i think transformation is critical okay so that's like right on uh, uh, point that uh, karan mentioned uh, i think in order to uh, to do this uh, what i have seen with various startups is some of them uh, understand the business well when they come in to uh, propose a solution for example okay so some of what's important really for a startup is to say okay where is the problem what's the problem i'm trying to solve okay and then come up with a solution and from what i have seen with a few of the startups particularly in the logistics space okay they come in with a very fresh perspective okay they come in with a completely outside in view of uh, the same business and coming in with a solution uh, rather than uh, organizations which have been stuck with uh, like let's say legacy uh, platforms you know that they've been working with so i think one very key aspect is uh, startups come with a with a very fresh perspective uh, the other thing again i'm going to be a little uh, you know repeat a few points that karan mentioned uh, the other thing is agility okay so transformation agility is really important and uh, large organizations that have typically grown or even small organizations that have grown with uh, a certain set of technology and people uh might find or even systems might find it difficult to uh, quickly uh, change their entire architecture and all of that stuff so that's where startups come in and i think uh, they add tremendous agility okay to to this uh, to organizations tremendous okay i mean there's so many places that they can uh, bring speed and the third thing i would say is particularly scale okay and i'm not talking about a reliance because we are at a different scale altogether uh but i'm saying for a small organization that needs to scale uh basically they need the ability to like let's say get on the cloud for the most the most basic uh, you know uh, common denominator is get on the cloud to be able to scale number one uh i think that's where startups a lot of the solutions are all saas based hence scalability becomes relatively easier for them and they are able to move so i think that's you know that pretty much summarizes from my perspective uh, what's what value startups are really bringing to retail uh, they bring in a good a really a fresh view to to solving the problem and i've seen that as i said in various warehouse management uh, 
solutions uh, that have been proposed to us. Uh, similarly, they bring in agility and they bring in scale. So I think these are the key uh, points. I'm so Vikram, you know, just, just to, before we move forward, I think you made a very good point about importance of uh, fresh perspective, which they bring in. Uh, how do you, in your experience, where do you think, do, do you think they lack, they come with required domain knowledge, domain understanding? So, and, so yeah. on, and how important is that for you? to? to yeah. So, to you know, I wasn't going to talk, uh, speak uh, a lot of the points in this first conversation. And I thought as the conversation goes along, uh, where they struggle. Okay, let's put it now. Let's address the aspects of where they struggle. Okay, uh, a lot of them are excited to kind of uh, uh, you know develop the ideas that they have, and hence one fundamental fundamental factor where I've also seen startups fail. And and you know I would shoot down nine out of ten startups for lack of domain knowledge uh, and not knowing what exact problem are they solving. Okay, and I said that first. Uh, what exact problem are you solving? And, and I'm saying at a ground level, decide and come to what KPIs are you going to improve for the business? So for example, a planning solution that's come in and been proposed to us with machine learning and all that good uh, tech, uh, are they actually helping me improve my stock outs? Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, make sure that I don't miss out any loss opportunities. So that's a very fundamental uh, thing. If I'm looking at something in the warehouse, are they really helping me uh, get that many pieces of product uh, moved from X to Y place uh, within the warehouse? So understanding the domain, understanding the KPIs is where they struggle. Now that would be number one. And I'd say another point where they struggle would be that um, they probably pitch to organize. They should really know who to pitch to and where to pitch. Uh, it's very exciting to pitch to a large organization and say, you know, we'll do this for you because the potential of business is huge with a big organization. But then they have a struggle with scaling on their on their people side and on their tech. So I would say that, uh, you know, where startups should really yeah, shoot for yeah. where to uh, We'll come to that again, come to yeah. that chapter. Issue. So uh, yeah. let me come back to Surin and Adarsh. And you are both uh, budding entrepreneurs. You are doing some work. Whatever little I know about your your technology, which you are doing, work you are doing is very exciting. So, what is what do you think is your view in terms of uh, you know uh, building businesses and how do you reach out to the brands? What how what kind of help you think? What kind of help you need from the ecosystem, which will take you to achieve achieve your goals? You know, let me start with Suren. Uh, you you are you are more experienced, maybe uh, than others, and you can start with that. Sure, sure. Um, thanks, thanks, Ajay, for having me here, and thanks, Arai. Uh, I think it's a great uh, discussion, and I was just listening in to whatever uh, you know, Karan and uh, Vikram were saying. So I think uh, I echo a lot of what uh, Vikram was saying, actually, and I think uh, the focus for us at Tango Eye has at least been uh, using or leveraging these platforms like Arai and Hundred Watts to uh, really reach out to customers, right, and reach out to the right set of customers for the phase in growth that we are actually currently in. And that involves, uh, uh, that actually allows us to look at customers as partners uh, rather than uh, uh, just a big account that we're going after. And in this process, we also learn, take feedback, iterate our product and ensure that, uh, you know, I think uh, Vikram was uh, really uh, zoning in on that. We ensure that our business or our product is really solving a business purpose or a business problem for our customer, right? That's the biggest focus. And we evolve the customer pipeline. We add to that as a company, as we evolve as well. And that, that same from you know, evolving the product to, to the higher funnel of customers, and as well as evolving or upskilling the team and, and uh, increasing the team size to cater for those uh, higher level of customers as well. So I think at this point, I see customers as partners and I look at organizations uh, and platforms like this to really help us connect uh, with customers. And um, I think uh, I, I've always been customer first over investment. So I think that's that's better approach. And I think uh, that's what I would look for. Thanks, Surin. Let us hear what Adesh has to say, and then we, I'll come back to you. Yeah. I would have wanted to talk to you, yeah. Yeah, hi Ajay. Thanks for having me here. And thanks RAI for having us here. So, uh, like my point is like what Vikram has already covered, like most of the points, 
as in first is uh, the uh, overall market fit because nine out of ten this vikram rightly mentioned that they don't have domain expertise as in we just come up with a lot of ideas uh, to fit in into the retail industry and uh, that's where uh, like we we understand that uh, like retailers or uh, uh, enterprise brands will become a partner to us in in our journey in terms of helping us to understand the uh, product market fit rightly understand the customers requirement and how do we get the things into the enterprise level this is one and second challenge the major challenge that we face is connecting to the right person or pitching to the right person in the industry because uh, we reach out to some person who is relevant in the domain but he not he may not be the relevant in terms of taking decisions or uh, the one who is taking decisions may not help us with uh, uh, getting the right solution out so uh, these are the challenges on top of it uh, one of the major challenge today is data privacy and trust like building the trust with brands and uh, uh, ensuring that uh, like data is protected from both the ends from enterprise level customers end as well as from a startup end as well so these are some of the challenges which uh, uh, like which are uh, largely faced by companies like us which are uh, like which are very small and starting uh, at a like which are starting to do pilots with small uh, with large enterprises so suren let me come back to you you mentioned that you know that you know you are you are you are looking at uh, what do you think is the role of uh, you know people like us in helping you on looking at the problem from the business point of view because you have built technology and you said you are looking at the customer first approach is what is your principle how, how do you think you know what how do you get the in, insights about the real business requirements because and especially in a business like yours where you are face you are you are uh, catering the need of not just retail industry but across certain other sectors as well you know right absolutely ajay i think uh, you know focus is to try and uh, build a success story around one industry and do that right and do that really well and then that can be replicated across the board right like you do one thing right you do everything right that's that's mm. what i think and um, and um, organizations like you know hanwards or ra i think uh, the importance is to uh, allow the access open open doors and for not just for business but for knowledge sharing also right time is a very very big uh, you know a sort of a commodity today and i think to be able to get the time of uh, big cios or uh, ctos uh, or ceos or operational people whether it be in in uh, the business itself or who have done tech products or retail technology innovations i think that's where the learning can come in and uh, some sort of initial guidance for startups can really define which direction they end up uh, going and that can have a uh, you know very uh, profound effect on how uh, the traction is generated or how the business evolves i think that early mentorship guidance on uh, on the product development and the product market fit are some things that that uh, you know as a as an organization or platforms could really help uh, startups like us thanks so karan uh, you know uh, you must be aware that most of the people when they do a startup and i've been a startup uh, entrepreneur myself Uh, when they start they are always the one thing which they are dreaming of is that when will i get funded you know a lot of them look at that as a next level of success milestone you know and uh, what is your as an investor what do you look at uh, what do you look at these ventures from one the point of view of considering when they are ready when do you think they are ready to for you to take them seriously and and start uh, you know this discussions on investment opportunities or right. they are attractive for you somebody like you you know god no interesting question ajay so you know a uh, couple of things first startups come to us across different stages right um, the thing is for each business model the timing of raising capital is different uh, because they might need capital at the very onset of building that business model and this is true for a lot of plg businesses right uh, in b2b uh, although what is happening now is investors have started to prefer startups that have shown initial traction if not initial revenue then initial traction because that you know that really really gives a proof of adoption i think that is becoming very important 
another very important element and this is building on a point vikram uh, you know started which is that most startups lack the domain knowledge now when we look at b2b businesses and not only in retail but across industries we see that while you know the tech guy the cto could come from any industry but the cbo ceos have to come from the core industry because b2b businesses cannot be built these solutions cannot be built by an outsider you need to know the op operations of a retailer and the different stakeholders that interact with the retailer right uh, so this knowledge and the nuances as well because if you don't know, know that your innovation might be good but commercialization of that innovation is not going to happen that easily so it's very important people for, we find entrepreneurs who understand this right in in between. this is a qualifying factor for you to see the whether entrepreneurs yeah. or, or or the founders that come from what background and and what yeah. experience yeah and and what vertical so for a cto i would not have this judgment but um, you know person who has never seen retail operations right um, very hard for him to act as a ceo or a cbo of a startup so that is uh, i will not say it it is the only parameter but it is very important for us and especially because you know we invest very very early ajay and at that time we don't have uh, financial metrics to depend on right so it really is about the team as well so very important on that end and then there is you know a bottom up analysis of the market size right and we i honestly i don't believe in top down analysis because those figures are always bloated when you do a bottom up analysis and this is on the same lines as i spoke before you have to look at either the top line expansion or the bottom line and then see what a startup can actually gather over an elongated period of time right so that is another very important element for us now the thing is if we see that this startup is okay operating in a completely white space that is good right um, however if it is in a competitive space then is there uh, let's say a transformational differentiation in the solution or not or is it only incremental right because if it is only incremental then the chances are we might invest but following rounds are not going to happen right and for most vcs uh, follow on rounds are extremely important because that's how you know our, our equity value grows mm -hmm. right so one thing is that now let's say they are operating in a wide space uh, right are they uh, completely new we also want to see whether for that business model is it the right time to raise funds or not or shall we tell the entrepreneur that you don't need funds to prove the basic level uh, of and we are not talking about pmf here uh, ajay i am talking about completely pre pmf companies right pmf is hard to achieve comes later i'm talking about an mvp stage for b2b we we prefer having an mvp uh, I, i rarely see a startup who are pre mvp in the b2b domain getting funded so a, a product that is working that can be handed to uh, the users to the customers uh, even uh, it is only to gain some feedback that that is extremely important for us so these are some of the you know, basic underlying conditions ajay that we look at and of course then there is a lot of uh, you know diligence or market feedback that we gather from operators in the field such as you uh, bef before making that decision thanks uh, so uh, vikram let me get back to you you know uh, you have seen a lot of uh, startups you must have seen who come to you approach to you uh, for with various ideas and what do you what do you see them what do you expect them to come with as as a key thing which which draws your attention or which compels you to accept them or start talking to the work you see that is number one and then second is how what kind of value you think rei and and if they come with the rei and 100 watts reference somebody like this how do you see them differently i mean do you have any experience of that yeah so that's a, a very good question because whenever uh, i get approached by a startup uh, i have to put on a little bit of a lens uh you know that that kind of filters out and says okay this is someone who is relatively new in the industry okay uh may not have the the knowledge like the big giant uh, technology providers etc have uh, have today uh so i do apply that lens and i think the point that uh, surayan brought out was very important uh that uh, you know one has to and when i apply the lens i have got to be a little flexible and say okay they may not know 
uh, operations as well as we do the industry, for example, or or the big uh, giants, right, that we work with. Uh, hence, that little bit of a mentorship, that little bit of a nudge in the right direction is important. Uh, that little bit of questioning and probing that are you hitting the right numbers and, and so if you did it this way then we'd be able to get to the numbers so i think that uh, that to me is uh, is the crux of, uh, of of really getting looking at a startup when they come in to us right uh, in addition to the other points with that are they solving a problem that fundamental thing of yeah, course yeah. remains mm -hmm. yeah do you do you see do you also see value from the point of view of not just what they bring in what solution they bring in in terms of your uh, you know better value for your bucks by working with startups you know it's not just how much money you pay them but also the cost of your own investment of your time and your own effort of, of engaging with them i mean where, where what is your overall value you see in, in dealing with apart from agility and you know and and quick implementation yeah, I mean, so it comes down to that same point about, you know, are you solving my problem? So, for example, uh, we let's say we work with a transportation, uh, somebody who helps us on transportation and they come in with a lot of uh, experience on, uh, you know, with machine learning, AI uh, and the ability to scale, uh, to be able to customize quickly, to be able to configure and, and kind of adapt to our network planning very easily. Uh, so you know you understand that they if they understand your problem and they are able to uh, to demonstrate that yes you know if you change your your entire uh, uh, you know architecture your business architecture for example then we will be able to adapt like this so i think it's more uh, an iterative process between us and and the startup uh, us giving them constantly the business side of it uh, perspective and they coming in and saying okay how can i tweak my solution because they cannot look at it from our perspective and that's what we got to share with them so uh, yeah i think that's really what it is it's it's a, a kind of you know hand holding. you know vikram why i'm asking you this because i have got feedback from many ventures in the past that they when they approach a, a enterprise yeah. like you many times they are not entertained beyond a point because right. they feel their time is not worth spending with some guys like them you know and they feel that their cost of their time is more valuable than what the time they spend with the guy you know so right. in that context i asked you this you know no so that's that's exactly why i said where i said you know nine out of ten uh see a lot of people we meet right on a, on a daily basis there are people who are constantly coming in contact with you so there has to be a, a you know a fundamental first level of like okay do i think that these guys have the potential or not like hear them out once and then and then uh, take a very quick decision on saying let's move to the next so i don't think that my organization should be an example or a benchmark for that um, and i wouldn't even speak on behalf of what we do but my general perspective is to give an initial hearing uh, and and take a very quick decision on should we pursue it or not. Uh, as I said, that a lot of startups pitch to the wrong people. Okay, to me, it's the other way also. That's that's incorrect. You know, unless they know that they'll be able to scale and they are confident that they are really solving a problem, uh, then then they will get a hearing i can assure you and i know that uh, i've worked with one who we incorporated that startup into our business and today they are you know business very happy with uh, that kind of work that they are doing so it took them six eight months to get get to the point where uh, where actually you know we said let's now do something with it uh, so, so i think, think, yeah, do you think they come, if they come through by a validation of uh, platforms like rai and and 100 watts uh, you know that yes, they are they are really solving a problem to some extent. That ca carries some credibility for you. I think if if an accelerator like Hundred Watts is able to do that filter, you know the initial filter, and say the you know this is the uh, people who are who are really who have potential, and and then filter out those who don't. Uh, I think then you can definitely get a better hit rate with the startups. Yeah. Right. Thanks. So, um, Adarsh, I want to come back to you. I know, I know, you were one of you were part of our first uh, cohort in two thousand twenty February, and you started your entrepreneurship journey with something else, and then uh, after some time, you decided to pivot yourself into a completely different solution. How did that happen? Just will you tell because the interest of the other entrepreneur venture uh, uh, promoters 
how did that happen and how did you you took a completely different turn and now you're on a on a, on a track which you are enjoying yeah uh, so uh, when i started my entrepreneurship journey it was a warranty product warranty management and it was uh, it has two point of view as in one was b2b and another was b2c going towards businesses first or going towards cust consumers first now uh, for me it became a chicken and egg uh, kind of problem where uh, when i reached to a brand they were like okay how many customers you have uh, when i reached to a customers what is the value how many brands are connected to the platform and that's where i actually uh, find myself difficult to approach towards uh, um, brands to adopt our solution or towards the consumers to adopt our solution because it became a chicken and egg problem in both the end so that's where i pivoted it and we started uh, and like uh, to me it was a big problem that i was trying to solve for the industry and uh, that that's where i think let's start with something small and once we when we once we taste some sort of success uh, we'll grow things so that's the journey i am trying to cover today okay so suren uh, again coming back to you uh, you've been already established and you got certain you know uh, traction of your product and your technology already in the market and uh, and uh, we have been talking for the last for the last couple of weeks on what you're doing what do you think are are your expectations uh, you know and you are one of the finalists and all the best uh, for the for the finalists for the finals later today for the awards retecon startup awards uh what do you think are your expectations from people like rai or retecon or 100 watts to help you really achieve your dreams and your goals yeah i think it really came out in your conversation with vikram uh, and i think uh, both of you mentioned two really good points so i'll just echo that uh, one was you know point from vikram uh, saying it, it's not just pitching to the right organization it's also pitching to the right person right i think organization nothing but a, a bunch of people put together and you have to pick the right person or climb up the right tree for for a metaphor to that's one important thing right is your problem solving a operational problem then we should be speaking to the operations person um so that's that's one important point i would make the um the other one is you know what uh, you were saying uh, ajay like uh, if 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 or, if organizations like 100 watts and rai could actually serve as a filter for some of the bigger uh, partners or members of the larger ecosystem then i think it helps uh, organizations and large organizations get over that initial hurdle of can i trust this uh, startup do i give them the, the time that that you know is so valuable to me and that can really help open up doors and you know uh, speed or fast track uh, startups adoption in the uh, retail industry i think those are two really good points and i'd love to you know uh, see more of that coming through and i think uh, you know, we're already doing some of that work but i think it's it's a great point so i want to bring in another aspect to both of you you and adarsh and uh, you know i have been talking to uh, uh, you know founders like you almost every day and one of the experience i have is or the observation i have is uh, many times they are not very flexible in their approach their ideas and and they are not able to look at like bikram also mentioned they are not able to look at the problem as an industry specific problem they look at problem in their own eyes though yes they have an advantage of looking at a completely fresh perspective but sometimes they are not able to uh, they are not able to see the problem from the industry's point of view and and that's where the lot of conflict begins uh, what is your view on that how open normally um, i've seen lot of lot of most of the founders are not very open they are very rigid in their approach mm. what has been your your understanding and your experience in your approach and then we'll go to adarsh on the same thing sure sure yeah, i think i think that, that is a problem like you said um and i'll just add to why that problem actually happens is because as founders i think we are really passionate about what we are building a product and we tend to maybe get a little lost in the technology and how cool is it like for us it's like you know a camera can detect stuff that is cool and we get lost into that sometimes we can maybe lose track of what that means for a business or what that means for operations for vikram or you know any other business so i think 
back and look at it from their customer's point of view. Um, but I think, I think this is really why we, we are, there is a disconnect. Uh, and the other thing that happens is as talking to a couple of customers, what happens is we get a flurry of inputs. And sometimes we do get, we do, uh, get a lot of information that we then have to make a decision on, okay, what is the product direction going to be? Are you going to go and build a product for a specific customer? Are you going to change your product roadmap? Or are you going to uh, you know, say, I have the best product roadmap and I'm going to come continue working on what I'm working on, even if that might cost me this customer, right? That's a decision that uh, startups do have to make at some level. And, and what my approach has always been is to say, hey, we're a product company. I, I want, we, we, we want to focus on building the product that we have in our roadmap and take whatever feedback that customers are giving us and incorporate the best of that into our product roadmap and, and, and just sort of change maybe the direction and the guidance of our product roadmap rather than completely pivoting and going off into something else because that's, a, I think, a more strategic and a bigger decision that, that, should, uh, that should come. So this is sort of a balance that we need to strike as entrepreneurs uh, of uh, uh, you know tech products. I think that's that's uh, my two cents on this subject. Thanks, Adarsh. Your view on this on on being flexible and though I know you have you have, you are so flexible that you change the business line, you know idea completely. But in terms of industry approach and understanding and solution approach, how flexible you or your your co-founder look at it? Okay. So generally what happens, uh, at least with us, when, when we start, we fall in love with our ideas. Like uh, whatever we are solving, we just fall in love with our ideas. And uh, whenever we get some feedback, we see from the lenses that we can fit and incorporate it anyway in our ideas. And not considering that uh, if somebody is saying with some experience, it is a different or fresh perspective for us, which is coming from direct from the customers. And that's where the agile agility or the flexibility plays a major role for us to understand and incorporate it. Uh, so uh, that's what uh, uh, like a founder has to balance things in terms of incorporating others' view because we we generally get hundreds of new ideas every day from our customers, from partners, from um, acceleration programs, and everywhere. But then we have to sit and sort out where to go. Now that's where uh, 100 words and RAI platform uh, like needs comes in, where we understand what is right for us to incorporate in our roadmap and what is not. So that is more important for us to understand. We get everyday new ideas. Thanks. I think, Ajay, yeah. if I can add to, yeah. to what uh, Surin uh, touched on a very good point that you know you have to decide whether you are a product company or you want to end up being a services company because a lot of uh, your customers might uh, want you to might want to take you on might love your idea and then turn you into a services uh, company kind of you know uh, just making changes all the time so yeah. i think that's a very uh, difficult problem i would say for the founders of the startups and karan you might be able to also validate that Sure. No, absolutely, Vikram. Actually, I was going to jump in. Very valid point. And, you know, earlier in the conversation, you made a point that uh, almost all companies today are running on SaaS models. I think they're not running on SaaS models. They are software companies, right? They might be selling software subscription, subscription but they're not SaaS models per se, right? And uh, that's, uh, that's where, Ajay, I think you can bring in a lot of value. And I've seen you doing that with your startups. Uh, getting to what we you know call pmf in the investment world right a solution that fits very well with the customers at the right price point is very important that is step one i think that is where a lot of your expertise goes in but then there is a second point and many startups fail and this is you know series a and beyond when you have to scale up this product and operations that go along with this right? This is where a lot of startups would fail. And that is why you see the number of startups who raise seed uh, and go on to raise a series A is very, very small, right? A majority, massive majority of them fail, about 90% of them, right? And I think this second leg is also where you should be analyzing while, you know, bringing a startup on board, right? And seeing whether the founders are, uh, 
let's say wise enough to listen to you and take your inputs right and of course you'll have to work you're an accelerator so you work with them of course but then develop this as well because when they go to a reliance the reliance would not have a problem forcing them to become a services company only for reliance right it works for them but how can they go and scale products across you know brands like reliance that is i think another very uh, important uh, leg ajay that you can help startups with i think you're absolutely right and as i said i meet meet some of them almost every day and that is one of the reasons we don't pick them because when we see them they're not flexible we don't pick them now you know karan earlier you mentioned something which struck a bell in my my head immediately about plg you know and uh, and i am a big fan of plg and that is another thing which i am struggling to uh, to communicate with the ventures about the whole plg strategy especially in the saas era you know how do you i mean i would like you to elaborate a little bit on this so that for the benefit of other uh, uh, founders who are attending this right. session that why why plg makes them more attractive a plg approach makes them more attractive for at least from the investment point of view not just investment but also business point of view got it got it so i uh, ajay one thing i do not think having a plg model alone makes it attractive uh, but going into that point what vikram said uh, agility is important right plg ensures agility or enhances it right and it enhances adoption now you see uh, typical b2b models were top down sales models right you you talk to the leadership of your customers that's how you make a sale you go downstream and you know the the operating layer of the company adopts it because the leadership has adopted it right but as you know consumerism takes uh, charge what is happening is now b2b companies are also playing on a bottom up marketing strategy that is where plg comes into play so you get your product in the hands of the actual users using a plg model right and of course supplement that with a top down sales strategy that ensures that well if it is going to work you see adoption if it is not going to work if it is failing you know that and you can improve on it right either ways there is going to be speed right of rejection or of acceptance and if it is acceptance then you scale very fast because once i know that this product is being accepted by its users i as a venture capitalist can pump in money right into that model and then get it into the hands of all possible users that a startup can however there is a catch here ajay uh usually plg models right uh, are freemium models uh yeah. can they monetize, yeah. can they monetize later is an important element right and uh, tricky you you can't say from day one but you will actually have to work with the founders again to see uh, what is the value they bring on top of the cost uh, to the company right it it basically comes down to generating returns for the company right for their customers so that's what we'll have to estimate but honestly as investors we are wrong a lot of times uh, right undoubtedly i i mean founders i think are better suited but of course like you know the founders here suggested they're too close to the products they might not know um but yeah we can only estimate whether monetization happens or not there is no sure short way of telling so right. that that's that's a, that's a little about the plg model i always take it with a pinch of salt i am not uh let's say totally sold out uh, or like i'm blind uh, to the idea of that i'm a big believer of plg by the way but i am and i will continue no, to no. i see some failures in that you know so undoubtedly no 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 i think it's very uh, good if you want to scale fast right that's that's yeah. where the agility uh, comes in yeah so coming back to before we ask there is a question from the from the audience and we we'll last the question before that i want to ask adarsh and suren in your in this order do you have any questions to ask from vikram or or current here is an opportunity for you okay so uh, like i wanted to ask both of them uh, starting with uh, uh, like vikram like we are building a conversational commerce for d2c and retail brands so is there an, any opportunity where uh, retailers are looking forward for conversational commerce uh, leveraging messaging applications 
so conversational commerce is uh, is the way forward definitely um and i'm sure that your solutions will find great value okay but i have seen a lot of uh, a lot uh, maybe that's a little stronger word but i have seen a few of uh, the conversational commerce uh, solutions and i think getting it right uh, you know getting it right is important uh, and especially if you've got like ai behind it and stuff like that then uh, making sure that uh, that you become relevant your context is right in your solution that you know uh, in in the conversation that happens so i think that's really important uh, for you to make sure your solution is robust it gives you it gives predictable kind of outcomes you know uh, something that someone's expecting so uh, there's a lot of that happening but uh, quality of the solutions is is the yeah. important point here mm. okay so we choose a way uh, like to engage with small and medium retailers and d2c brands others uh, others please refrain from getting into product pitching here but i think generally do you have any other question you know so uh, yeah. let me move to let me move to suren i mean do you do you have any question with, without pitching the product Sure, sure, uh, sure. Jay. I was going to ask Vikram uh, and uh, Karan similar questions. So, but my question to Vikram is, um, Vikram, can you, for the help of others, just tell us maybe problem areas in your business that you're looking for solutions, and maybe there's someone out there that has one. And I'll just finish my question for Karan as well, and maybe you can take it up after. And the question for Karan is, you know, you're involved in the retail tech space. What are investment pieces that you potentially have right now? Uh, as a you know as problem areas in the in the retail tech that you are out there looking at startups that are solving for this problem i think that would be helpful for uh, everyone okay. here okay so i i won't talk about my business in particular but i'll talk about uh, retail in general uh, i'd say problem areas uh, you know one of the important aspects in any for any retailer is inventory okay and getting inventory right uh with omni channel with ecom and, and all of that stuff happening uh it becomes really important for inventory to be predicted correctly okay uh so i'm i really should be able to get uh, to to plan and, and predict my inventory right so i'd say that that is an important area uh, on getting your uh predictions right on inventory uh i would say your assortments uh, that's more an analytical kind of uh, an aspect which businesses maybe don't spend or are not able to, don't have the tools maybe to do that adequately so analytics on the kinds of assortments that you are doing across again as if you are a large scale uh, retailer then your assortments become even more important because they are regional and all of that specific at a micro level right uh, that's on the one side uh, i would say i won't touch upon the customer side of things because i mean there's a lot of stuff on augmented reality and all those are more uh, incremental kind of uh, solutions that can come in but i'd say the big area to me is logistics okay that i think uh, you know within my warehouse uh, how do i increase my throughput so various types of uh, solutions that deal with enhancing improving my logistics be it warehouse or be it my uh, delivering the product from x to y uh, and being able to plan my entire uh, efficiency around my transportation so i'd say that these two would be the big really big areas uh, again customer care uh, you know i think uh, others may be more related to that but customer care and being able to uh, converse with the customer and give them answer those there are some startups which have achieved some success but i don't know how well uh, particularly their ai aspect of it is working okay i don't that i haven't really seen success so i'll have to hear in fact from from any one of you if you've seen that but i don't see much happening on much uh, good quality happening i can see operations automated but i'm just not sure whether we are getting the right kind of outputs out of it yeah so there are thanks uh, uh, karan you want to take it up the very, very quickly ajay won't take long i know we have questions from the audience as well so yeah. let's answer that question right let me give you some background let's venture is a very a massive investor our portfolio size is over 350 companies today so we don't have a particular thesis but i'll tell you what i refrain from and this is important i personally do not like in the b2b space a lot of fancy tech that does not have adoption you know i i stay away from that because your customers are not going to give you money 
right? A reliance would not pay only because you are building an AR solution. It has to bring value to them, real dollars uh, to them, right? So I stay from that. But like uh, Vikram was saying, and I had mentioned this uh, very early in the discussion that I am looking at retail brands, customers, and supply chain management, right? And also a fintech layer. So I'm looking at this value chain all together. Uh, so it's very, very important for me to look at. I am uh, you know, sort of not very sold or let's say I'm not very read, well read on the customer end of things because there are so many changes that are happening quickly. It's hard to predict what our customer is going to adopt, right? But one thing is very clear. Uh, that user experience needs to improve, right? And conversational AI uh, is important. However, what I've seen is conversational AI in most cases is single channel, it's fragmented, there is no unification, right? So if I pick up a phone, talk to customer care, and if I am interacting uh, through emails or SMSs, there is no link when, when conversational AI is, is there. Then there is lack of context, there's lack of emotion, Right, uh, so that has to be deeply built when we are talking when we are talking about the customer uh, side of technology innovations. So that's a slightly broad answer to your question, Surin. But that's also because we, you know, we look at. I think super helpful. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so we have two questions from audience, and I think both of them have been answered. What is the cost of adding tech innovation to a business beyond money? And the second one is some technologies show promise, but they are, are they capable of adding bringing value to the retail business? I think. We have discussed enough to answer these questions. So before we say bye, I would like uh, 30 seconds each, Karan and Vikram, what will be your message to upcoming founders and the you know, B2B tech founders? What message you would like to give in 30 seconds? Perfect, Ajay. So as an investor, like uh, this, this would be counterintuitive, but I would actually suggest that founders listen to their customers more than they listen, listen to investors like us, and especially investors who do not come from operating backgrounds, because if your customers are paying you money, investors are going to give you theirs. Thanks, lovely. Vikram, you're on mute. Hmm. Yeah, so I'd have two messages uh, for them, which I've talked about earlier, is be clear about the problem you're solving. Uh, write down to which KPI of the business are you actually going to improve. Okay. Uh, and the second is listen to your uh, customer as, as Karan said, understand, understand what they are saying and be ready to be flexible about it. Yeah. Thank you. I think it was a wonderful discussion and, uh, and I, and, and, and as, as usual, we're always short of time for such interesting topics and thank you very much. Thank you REI for, for a, for a interesting discussion and, and, you know, for beginning this new journey of, of startup uh, awards of REI and taking them to the next level. And next year, we see you, all of you, in a, in a different avatar, all the ventures who are, and all the best to all the 10 finalists for the, today's uh, awards and for your final round of uh, presentations and, and hope you will be the winner. All the best. Thank you very much.